in my previous video, we were able to use an op amp as an oscillator. So how about converting this square wave to a triangular waveform using an amplifier again? In this video, we are going to discuss the working principle of integrators. And next week, we will see how low pass filters and high pass filters affect the signal properties. We're gonna play with signal shapes today, so get ready and let's start our video. Before diving into integrators, I want to let you know that in my future videos, I am planning to start 55 timer based circuit series. So if you are interested, make sure that you subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so you can stay tuned. At the first look at this circuit diagram, the first thing that may come to our mind is differential amplifiers. But here, instead of feedback resistor, we have a capacitor and it's behind the integration functionality of the circuit. So to have a better understanding, let's have a closer look. To make analyzing this circuit easier, we need to do two assumptions. First, the voltage at the non-inverting input is equal to the voltage at the inverting input. Second, the current at these terminals is equal to zero. By knowing this, we can use Kirchhoff's law to equate the input current to the feedback current, which is nothing but the capacitor current. Of course, we know that the input current is equal to the input voltage divided by R1 and the feedback current is equal to the capacitance times the derivative of the output voltage. And by doing a little bit of math, we can see that the output voltage is equal to something times the integration of the input voltage. Boom! That's why this circuit is called voltage integrator. But hold on, what is this something then? Well, to make things clear, it's better to analyze this circuit in frequency domain instead of time domain. All we need to do is to use the feedback capacitor reactance and using the same procedure, we can get the ratio V out to V in, which will form the op amp gain. From the gain formula, it's obvious that this circuit acts as low pass filter, because when supplying a signal with a very high frequency, the gain will be very low so that the signal will be eliminated at the output. On the other hand, when supplying DC voltage at the input, this will lead the gain to be infinity, and this is not possible of course, because the output voltage is limited between VCC and minus VCC, which is called saturation mode. So we can imagine the frequency response of this circuit to be like this. In order to avoid going to saturation mode in low frequencies, it's possible to add parallel feedback resistor to the feedback capacitor. In this way, the amplifier will work as integrator in high frequencies and differential amplifier at low frequencies. After this modification, the frequency response graph will be like this. These parameters are important for op-amp circuit design because in order to let this operational amplifier work in integrator mode, the input signal frequency must be higher than FL. Notice that any input signal frequency higher than F0 won't appear at the output, so make sure that your input signal frequency falls between FL and F0. As a practical example, I have chosen the following parameters for my design and constructed this circuit on a breadboard, and used a 5-5 timer to generate a square wave signal with a frequency close to 8 kHz. After feeding the square wave signal to the integrator circuit, we can see practically how the square wave signal has been converted to a triangular waveform, with a decrement in the signal amplitude. This brings me to the end of this video. I hope that you have learned something. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe, and remember that your support is the only thing that keeps such videos coming. Stay tuned and see you next time!